Hello, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. And today I'm going to keep front and center this issue about embalmers noticing abnormal clots and a recent article and a paper linked to the question of microplastics. And I'll be coming back to that in just a minute. But I think it's important for people to understand why it is that I keep on hitting about this point. And it's largely because a whistleblower, because I had spoken about these embalmers clots years ago, and my perception at the time was that it was occurring in people who had died until a whistleblower came forward and demonstrated in patients who had had embolectomies done that these kinds of abnormal fibrous clots were also occurring in the living. I think that's extremely serious and needs proper investigation. My responsibility is to not allow the scientific community to ignore it because it needs to be investigated. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this research, and I'm going to be giving you some information about the principles of where the plaque disease was occurring and why microplastics may also be relevant, but in a different way. Before I start, as usual, just so that you can support us, we have created our Vision Med chatbot. You click on the link below, you'll be taken here, you put in your email address, um, and then you get access to the chatbot. And as I keep mentioning to people, one of the favorite searches on there is GERT. You just type that in and it will bring up all the videos related to GERT. And uh, this is relevant because I plan to talk to him again soon. Um, so please support us, um, join us in that process of registering for it. Additionally, I've just about completed the uh, Advanced 360. It's still in the pre-launch phase. And we are over 40 modules, 44 modules. These are all the aspects of COVID-19, including autoimmunity, um, everything that I could think of, and probably a few more to come. This is essential because COVID has not finished and we still have a lot of work to do. And as I said, I hope to speak with Gert again soon, who will probably update us with the latest things that are happening across the world. Uh, final point to consider, subscribing seems to be a bit more difficult these days. Here is a video that I've got. And what you must notice, because the subscribe button seems to be hidden, is look right here for this little bell. And if you hover over it, what then happens is a subscribe button appears right here. And so if you want to subscribe, please click on the links below. Join us, look in the description and help us to continue to grow. All right, let's get back to this story that came out in Science Alert about microplastics being found in blood clots in heart, brain, and legs, published on the 23rd of May, 2024. And um, essentially, there was a study earlier in the year talking about microplastics. These are tiny plastic shed from larger chunks that are found in more than 50% of fatty deposits from clogged arteries. And um, there was another study in China finding microplastics in blood clots surgically removed from arteries, heart and brain, deep veins of the lower legs. And then more recently, there's a smaller study looking at arterial plaque that um, was published just in March. This is the one that I'll be making reference to. And I have a feeling that people are hearing what we're saying about embalmers clots. And they're trying to find reasons for it without addressing the elephant in the room. For anyone who knows what I mean, there is an elephant in the room. And we can't let it go because this elephant could be relevant to many things that we're seeing that don't follow a normal pattern. There's a responsibility to make sure that every avenue is explored and that we find coherent answers for abnormal patterns we may see. Just think about this a moment. Imagine that 
funeral directors were bringing in patients who had died at, wherever at home, in hospital, and they were finding a significant proportion of them had yellowing of the eyes and the skin. That's suggestive of jaundice. Should these funeral directors ignore that? Or should they raise attention to the fact, you know, we are seeing more cases of jaundice than usual. Could this be relevant? Should we examine these bodies to see if they have liver disease? I would expect that if they were seeing something like that, absolutely, they should raise awareness of it. Well, it was the same that occurred with these embalmers. They were just noticing higher amounts of really abnormal clots. Why? Would this not be investigated by the scientific community? That really is the question, and I will not leave this alone because the work needs to be done. Now, just in terms of this paper that was focused on microplastics, it's still quite relevant. But microplastics is an issue that has been around for a long time. It probably wouldn't explain embalmer's clots, which seem to increase significantly since 2021, um, but it could explain some patterns that we're seeing over the long term with regards to other clots. Here we have this paper, Microplastics and Nanoplastics in Atheromas and Cardiovascular Events, published the 6th of March 2024. These are the Italian um, group, and I've been very impressed with the Italian research. They're not afraid of asking some very hard questions and looking for um, what could be controversial answers. And this is just the abstract, not the full paper. Uh, you'll have to pay for the full paper. But it is that they are looking at microplastics and nanoplastics as a potential risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So they took an observational study looking at patients who had a carotid endarterectomy for asymptomatic carotid artery disease. I'll show you some pictures so you know what I mean. And what they were finding there is that of um, the 257 completed studies, they found that polyethylene was detected in the plaque of 150, 58.4% of these patients had plastics in their arterial plaque. So this is relevant, but it probably doesn't explain the embalmer's clots. Now, just so that you understand what we're talking about with regards to these uh, carotid arteries and so on, I'll show you a few slides just so that you have an understanding of it. But this here is an image of the vascular system. You can see here, this is the heart in the middle. Going down is the descending aorta, which splits into arteries going to the legs. Here you have the subclavian arteries going to the arms. And going up in the neck here are the carotid arteries, both sides, which then go into the brain. There are usually four points of blood supply, two at the front, two at the back for the brain. So the brain is well perfused by blood. They were interested in these arteries here because this is kind of like what plaque would look like. And when it's above a certain percentage of obstruction, some of these patients would then have the plaque removed what we call a carotid endarterectomy. And this is probably a little bit closer as to what it looks like. And what the surgeons will do is open up the artery and strip out this plaque. It is a, it is a significant operation, not necessarily like a heart operation, but not one that is taken lightly because there are risks that can occur. And so this is the fatty deposits that they were then taking and they were studying it, and they found that 58.4% of these plaques had a degree of microplastics in it, which suggests that they are circulating. That's definitely very important, and it probably is relevant to clots that are occurring over many, many years because we've been exposed to microplastics for a long time. But it wouldn't explain what has been noted by embalmers. And what I want to be careful of is that people don't use other pieces of research that are not relevant to detract from the research that needs to be done. As I've always said, you just need to take the clots, examine it closely, look at the proteins, try and characterize what is involved in it. Why are they fibrous? 
why are they so hard to dissolve? Is it in any way connected to the fact that we have across the world elephantized, you can use that word, significant proportions of the population? That's what people are afraid of, and that's why they label it a conspiracy. I say, just do the work. Make sure that this is not part of the problem. Don't let it knock over chairs, damage windows, and not properly investigate it. Because if it is relevant, we need to know. Because it could change the way that we practice medicine, certainly when we are looking at significant clots that are very, very difficult to dissolve. There's still a lot of work to do. But what I'm trying to emphasize to people is don't get distracted by pieces of research that don't answer the definitive questions that we need answering. That's the bit that I think is critical for us to keep on pushing for. So as I said, join us again um, on Vision Med in our chatbot, please. Uh, that way you can ensure that you're learning about all the stuff that we have done over 350 videos over a number of years, asking the hard questions around COVID-19. Have a great evening.